that whole federal election thing was just one year ago yesterday. Back then, there were a whole bunch of new MPs descending on Parliament Hill in the weeks after, and the largest number of rookie MPs actually elected since 1993. Now, a year later, those same MPs aren't quite so new to the job. So what have they learned? What have been the hardest parts of adjusting to life in politics? Joining me now, three former rookie MPs, no longer rookies, really. <laughs> Liberal MP Pamela Goldsmith-Jones, Conservative MP Karen Vecchio, and the NDP's Tracy, Tracy Ramsey. Good to see you all. Thank so you're, you. you're like, you're, you're new-ish now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sheen is off a little bit. Um, what, let, let's just start about what's been the biggest surprise. You, you've been doing it for a year. There's some things, I'm, I'm sure you had to work out, personal things, professional things. What's been the biggest surprise for you, Tracy? Uh, just how much you have to learn. Like, not yeah. just the procedure of the house, but learn about each other, learn about, uh, I sit on a committee, so learning about that. Sure. Um, you know, learning about how you can help your constituents, how many issues people have in our ridings. I was surprised how many uh, people need help with immigration mm -hmm. uh, in my riding oh, yeah. of Essex. So, learning about that and, and how we can help them, the connections we can make. Uh, you know, it's been equated to drinking from a fire hose and I think that's a fair <laughs> estimation uh, for all of us but you know for me it was a, a wonderful challenging year and, yeah. and every day continues to well, be. Well you hard. really make it sound like a dream job yeah. I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> How about you Karen? Well you know I came from the constituency yeah. life and yeah. the one thing I didn't uh, that I did find is they don't teach new MPs what happens at the constituency mm -hmm. so going off of what Tracy yeah. said you are going in there blind I felt pretty comfortable going in from that but that you are going in blind so I came on the legislative side but for me I think the biggest change has basically been at home. Mm -hmm. I'm the girl that, you know, you come to my house, I'm wearing pajamas, and we now have a pizza delivery guy that goes, oh, you're Karen Becky, you're MP. And I'm in my pajamas because I, free, you know, I'm not not Karen that just lives on my street. I'm yeah. now yeah. somebody else. So yeah. that's a little bit different for me getting used to that, just not being Karen anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pamela, how about you? One of the biggest surprises is the amazing 338 people mm -hmm. that Canadians elected. You ask someone, oh, what brought you here? Well, I was an emergency room doctor. Really? <laughs> or I was a law professor yeah. at the U of T. Yeah. It is remarkable. Yeah. And I think that we're all products of Canada's great investment in public education. And I am continually blown away by the talent in the House yeah. of Commons. You, you have a, you, I don't know if it's slightly more demands, you guys can judge, but you are the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign mm -hmm. Affairs. So how, how have you found that juggle um, between, also you're in BC, right? That, so yes, you have to go back and juggle. forth. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a lot to manage. It has been. Um, I'm grateful my children are growing up and, and, and moved out so that makes a big difference in in the Liberal caucus anyway 50% of MPs have children under 15 and so they need our support so I don't have that anymore yeah. but um, it's been such an honor to serve Minister Dion in foreign affairs mm -hmm. and uh, to Tracy's point the learning curve has been really facilitated by incredible staff yeah. and yeah, colleagues nice. the amount of work that MPs take on personally their own personal reading mm -hmm. beyond Beyond what they're sort of given, uh, their own ability to write speeches, we we do support one another and and hone one another in a way that is much more deep and rich than you see in the House of Commons. Absolutely. Uh, question period. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, what about being in opposition for you two ladies? Is that you know it obviously wasn't the goal you wanted to be yes. you know, in government, <laughs> but you're in opposition. Have you found that to be a good actually a good place to start to learn things rather than being plunged right into it? I'd have to say absolutely. Yeah. I know for myself. Um, when I'm writing speeches, just like you said, I think many of us write the speeches. And for myself, I like to have Karenisms. I like to make sure that my speech sounds like who I am, sure. so that you're bringing to the table and you're bringing to the house who you are and what your values are and the values for your own writing. So I think the opposition has been a great place to start because you're really doing research. You're yeah. not being, you're not given different things sometimes and you're looking at from different viewpoints mm -hmm. too. So I think that's a really great way of learning. Um, I always look at the 360 approach and mm -hmm. this is, I think being on the opposition, you really get that opportunity to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, Tracy? Yeah, we get to be critical. We get to actually be the voice of Canadians. <laughs> so much fun. Oh, it's great. It's complaining. It's so it's not, fun. It's not yeah. complaining, but I mean, no, we, I we get yeah. to represent the voices of a lot of Canadians who are frustrated with things some, that the government is doing. Uh, so we get to voice that. We get to stand up and be that voice for them. And I think that a lot of Canadians connect to that when they uh, hear their question being asked, when they hear something that matters to them being brought up in a speech. Um, you know, it's important for them to have that uh, that perspective be brought forward. And uh, for me, you know, in the NDP 
Peacock is it's so incredibly collaborative. I've really enjoyed that process, our legislative process, the way that we you know look at everything, uh, not just through a lens of our riding, but through uh, the way uh, that we look at things in terms of social justice. Mm -hmm. So you know, being in opposition, we get to bring forward all of our progressive ideas and uh, work with the government at times in the opposition, uh, the official opposition, to bring them forward. It sounds so wonderful listening to you all. <laughs> Just such a Good magical yeah. talk. <laughs> there must be something that sucks. Like you know, there must be something where you're like, you just are after a year you're like, oh, this is this is not the best thing. Missing your family, yeah. being yeah. away and from your, home. And your friends. I have two teenage boys. They're 15 and 13. So being away when you know they're playing their first football game, missing those kind of things, it's tough. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I I think at the same time. It really shows them like what can happen, what you can do, and so you know we're we're a great example to all of our children. To uh, Pam's point, all of us that have kids, I think yeah. there are more in this parliament uh, mm -hmm. than ever. Uh, when someone's really highly partisan, uh, you know there there are a lot of folks that sit in the house with us that uh, I think are still stuck in campaign mode sometimes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, and when we can't crack that and work together, uh, it becomes obstructive and, and frustrating. I, the challenge for me has been leaving my family. I have five kids. You have um, five kids? I know. That, wow. That's the challenge in itself. Yeah. So I have my five kids. Uh, my parents are, they'd hate to hear this, but they are getting older. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that I'm not with them every day and not just around the corner to go and see, to make sure everybody's good uh, and okay. I think that's been the biggest challenge for myself is leaving that mom thing. Yeah. Now, my husband's been fantastic, but sure. at the same time, I am that I'm that Mother Hubbard. I'm that person that wants to be there with my kids and watch them play their first volleyball game and things like that. So I try to make sure, and this is my biggest thing is, when I come home back here on Mondays, I'm exhausted because I have made sure that every minute of the day is used. If I'm baking cookies and then I'm going out to an event and then I'm doing this and I'm doing that, and, and I think that's been the biggest challenge, but at the same time, I'm really learning the work-life balance a lot better now too. Yeah, good. Yeah. For me, I would also say, and this is political, it's such a great opportunity to bring a little bit of British Columbia to Ottawa. Yeah. <laughs> so it, and it, the travel is the travel, that's fine. But the ethic, the ideas, yeah. as we get into uh, pricing carbon pollution, for instance, mm -hmm. or marine protection, these are things that are really important and taken as a given mm -hmm. in that part of the country. And I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for all Canadians to benefit by that. So making sure that that is front and centre is a challenge. Yeah. Um, and I'm Pleased with the progress. <laughs> <laughs> like how I said, what's something that sucks and you all gave me challenges. Yeah. <laughs> You're good politicians. All right. <laughs> Ladies, congratulations on one year. You've got lots more to go. Thank you, Mary. Thank, Thank you very much, Rosie. And to both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thanks, ladies. Thanks.